Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Resurgence 112, coming to you live from the Frank C. Irwin Jr. Special Events Center in Austin, Texas. The following contest is a number one contendership match for the United States Championship. Off the Florida Keys, this is the party pirate, Davey Rogers. And we are setting things off for the number one contendership match to the United States Championship, Davey Rogers. The first one going to throw his name into the hat, so to speak, to try and challenge Jimmy Kane at Supernova. And we are coming off of a red-hot Phoenix Cup. Where a lot happened. Like a lot. Some stuff I'm pissed about. But other stuff, I couldn't be more than happy about. And let me just say, congratulations to the champions. Of course, it was that Phoenix Cup. Jimmy Kane was able to retain his title over Bedlam. Eric Bedlam, that is. So we get to see who gets to challenge the Punk Rock Kid next. Will it be Davey Rogers or will it be his opponent? Who is... Oh. Oh, this is good. This is going to be good. Ladies and gentlemen, from the heavens, this is Archangel. And Archangel wanting to finish off this season with some gold. Has the opportunity if he's able to beat Davy Rogers here. Would be challenging Jimmy King for that title at Supernova. But everybody wants to go into the next season with a title. And especially going into Rise from the Ashes following Supernova. So, this is going to be really good. The Archangel. Those white glazed over eyes. Yeah, I got a feeling this one's gonna be pretty good. Davy Rogers and Archangel. Both men are ready. Bell rings. Match is underway. Opening contest. And Davey right away with a suplex into the cover, looking to put Archangel away fast, not even one. Archangel wasn't as caught off guard as Davey thought he was going to be. Oh, knee to the midsection, and a second one there. Jawbreaker. Big clothesline misses. And just going to launch Davey across the ring. Knee to the back, does not connect. Jumping neckbreaker. Oh, and a stomp on the back of the head. So the first into the mat goes Davey Archangel looking to keep control of this match. Davey not going to let him with a punch to the midsection. And a punch by Archangel. Both men trying to establish dominance here. Davey on his back now. Knee driven right into the middle of that spine. 
And also a straight jacket choke, using his own arms to try and choke out his opponent. Evie able to use leverage to his advantage and is able to get out of it. Now thinking, what will he have to do to put away Archangel doing some thought on the outside there? Punch to the face by Archangel. Evie takes out the leg. Forearm by Archangel. Gets back into the ring. Oh, and hung up on the top rope. Archangel's gonna taunt. Davey grabs the arm. He was waving on was to take him over. Yeah, sitting the overcastle there. No, going after the arm. You gotta think somewhere in the back, Jimmy Keen is watching this match closely, knowing that either one of these two will be his number one contender. Not even one. Referee just got into position and Archangel was able to get his arm up. Now the surfboard stretch knee dug right in between the shoulders. Shoulder tackle into the uh, bot or the middle turn buckle. Sorry, Davy was able to move out of the way. Davy lining up his opponent. Leg drop up to the outside. Yeah, it's definitely being done as Archangel was draped over the bottom rope, punched to the side of the face, you gotta make him walk the plank! And a modified camel clutch, knee on the back. Trying to add as much leverage to it as he can. Referee not able to see from that position if Archangel was hitting the bottom rope or not. Davy sends him to the outside. Looking to do some... Oh, major damage there on the apron, planting Archangel head first. Punch to the side of the face. Archangel heads back into the ring, followed by Davy. Big clothesline takes down Archangel into the cover by Davy. Only a two that time. Kick between the shoulders. Oh, curb stomp. Face and body being sent into the mat. Oh, just wrenching on the arm. Oh, God. Lucky he didn't dislocate it. And they're stomping on the leg. And what is he thinking here? Oh! Just that snapping tension on the leg. Another tackle. Punch to the face. Another punch to the face. Watch the plank. And Davy is feeling fired up. Down to the midsection. Kick to the back. Into the cover. Two, no, two only. Another kick, Davy lighting up his opponent now. Could be thinking for a Kraken stretch. No, has the arm hooked. Small package driver. Doesn't hold on to it though, going in for the cover now. One, two, that's it. The winner of the match and number one contender for the United States Championship. Davey Rogers! Davey Rogers getting the opportunity to go after that United States Championship at Supernova and is going to look to dethrone the punk rock kid. As you can see, throwing a little insult his way there. As he is able to celebrate with the members of his brigade, his fan crew. That takes up. Wait a second! Arakane! With that Shinai, the kendo stick! Maru Kane is back, and he just took out the number one contender to the United States Championship.
My God. Well, coming up next, for those of you who saw Phoenix Cup, you were able to see the individual who won the women's side of it. And from what I understand, she would like to come out here and talk for a second. Representing the World Warriors, from Brisbane in Queensland, in Australia, she is the 2020 Women's Phoenix Cup Tournament winner, Jennifer Jett! And there you see her. The woman with a horseshoe so far up there, she was able to put away Laura Alberts. And Hope Rogers. She gets that Phoenix Cup win. And now she gets to challenge whoever she wants. I hope Kimiko's watching closely, because I got a good feeling I know who this is going to be. Did you say triple threat match? Anyways, take it away, chat. happening backstage well get a damn camera there first I have to deal with that heaping load of wait what Linton and Stevens oh god oh god come into a brawl can we please get security over there like now Kick to the midsection. Want to make sure nobody gets, you know, inexplicably hurt. Forearm to the shoulder. And Linton trying to drag Stevens somewhere. Stevens not going to let him. On the shoulder, there's no DDT. <laughs> and Stevens just got tossed into that equipment box there. Takes him down and going after the leg of Brian Stevens. Wait, what? <laughs> Security's taking a lunch break? I don't give a damn. They're here to do a job. Get over there, now! Elbows to the midsection. Alright. Taking a look at where this is, you can see the parking garage there on the left. The main entrance, or one of the main entrances, I should say, into the actual venue. Big low blow by Stevens. Um, West Hallway. I want to say first floor, possibly basement level. Just get them there now. 
Why am I the one having to tell you where this is? This is your job. Get over there and stop this. <laughs> Face first into that electrical panel there, luckily. The panel was closed. That could have ended very badly. Only security was there to stop this. Face first. Like, am I really gonna need to send the coterie over there to do your damn jobs? Steven's with a chair now. Tried to send him into another storage box there, but Stevens collapses before connecting with it. It will catch the light, trips him up. Not trying to do some more damage to that leg of Stevens. And once again, try sending him into that electrical panel box there. Picks up the legs, second time, and a third time. Steven's that time tripping on the chair. Luckily, he only landed on his back. Linton, big neck breaker on the floor there. Stomping between the shoulders. Wait, what? What do you mean your go-karts are out of fuel? Don't take the damn go-karts, run! Oh look, there's one of your guys just standing there. God damn, what am I paying these people for? Linton throws Stevens towards the door there. I believe that's one of the server rooms here. Here at the uh, special events center. Stevens has him up. Sends him over. And a ace crusher. Or cutter, whatever you want to call it. Steven's gonna send Linton into the side of a table there. Face first off the floor. Now he's gonna try choking out Linton. Clearly the terms of service not done with the one night stand and clearly the security team is not done with their damn break. Not giving a damn about the well-being of the wrestlers. And you know what? Doug, Prodigy, Chad, Awesome X, get your asses over there and end this. Pedigree. And would you look at that? Here comes the Coterie to come and save the damn day because security doesn't want to do their jobs. Coming. Coming up next. The number one contender for the women's title will be in a match. And there you see Amanda Violence going up against Alice Vapern. Oh, it is impossible to pay for good help these days. My God. Women's division match starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. From the dark side of Wonderland, this is Alice Fateburn. There you see Alice Fateburn, who's been having this long feud with Bella Angel. Hopefully it has come to an end. Bella was not able to continue on to the second round of the Phoenix Cup. Alice Fateburn was, though, before ultimately being eliminated. Hi. Not part of the Coterie. Isn't it? So, number one contender was determined in a battle royal at Phoenix Cup. It was ultimately won by a member of Kimiko Kun. And you have to wonder What's your plan? What's how is that going to play out at Supernova? Oh, will you follow? Are you a fighter? Are we a coward? It's our time. Tip out. 
From Asbury Park, New Jersey, representing Kimiko Green, this is the queen of violence, Amanda Violence. Man of Violence ended up winning the that six woman over the top Ralph Number One contendership match. Alice Fate and Amanda Violence, both women are ready. Bell rings, match is underway. And a stiff punch to the face by Amanda Violence. Immediately has Fate Burn hooked, was thinking suplex, no, not gonna allow it. Possibly thinking suplex powerbomb. Oh, running slam by Fate Burn. And just a falling punch to the face. May not be the biggest dog in the fight, but still using all of the weight she has behind her for that. Into the cover. Whoa. One only. Gonna take more to put away the number one contender. Oh, kick to the side of the face off paper. Just trying to swing for something. Clearly a little discombobulated there. Kick to the head connects. And clotheslines Violence out of the ring. And Amanda Violence just got right back to her feet. You have to remember, it was an over-the-top rope battle royal that Violence won. Paper and trying to run, trying to rub some salt in the wound. Well, not really rub salt in the wound because Amanda Violence won, but still, you know what I mean. Big clothesline. Alice picks her up. Hangs her up on the top rope and sends her flying back to the ring. Close line misses. Alice tries one of her own. Man of Violence caught her into a uh, German suplex there. Stop on the back of the head. Violence deadlifts her up into a powerbomb looking to end this. No, not even one. I think Violence more or less just shoved her off. Didn't want that to be what put the match away. Close line in the corner. Kick between the shoulder blades. Stomping on the midsection over and over. Oh, forearm to the side of the face. And now biting on the fingers of Alice. Brings Alice back to her feet, sends her off, or no, sends her over the top rope, sorry. And Amanda, able to pick her up, backbreaker. This combination of blows, me right to the face. over and over. Kick to the midsection. Oh, rolls through cover. One, two, no, two only. And Amanda looking to end it here. Running right at Alice, no, flip DDT, not able to connect, picks her up, no, reverse DDT by Fate Burn. Amanda getting a little bit too ambitious with her jump there for the flip DDT, she hits the act of violence. 
Into the midsection, Cutter rolls through, Dragon Sleeper! It could be looking to end this match as she has ended many in the past. Looking for the submission. Now let's go of Fate Burn. And she is feeling very cocky about how she is doing in this match. Fate Burn barely standing on her own two feet. And it picks her up. Suplex. Powerbomb. Couldn't get the word out. <laughs> Shoots the half in, into the cover. And over the mouth. And that is it. Amanda Violence! And Amanda Violence able to put it away here. Yeah, I think the champion has to be wondering will Amanda put her position with Kimi Kokun front and foremost, or will she go into business for herself? We will find out at Supernova. But coming up next, speaking of Supernova, number one contendership match. Or I should say tag team representative. For the tag team titles at Supernova. Will it be Recoil or will it be Shake Shack? The following is a tag team contest where the winners will be crowned Resurgence's number one contenders for the RWR Tag Team Championships. On the way to the ring, from Anaheim, California, representing Kimiko Goon, the Shoot Wrestling Cyborg, Damian Longoria. Longoria. He's been very, very, very upset recently with how things have been going here on Resurgence. Well, tonight he gets his opportunity to put up, or do me a favor, put a muzzle on it and shut up. From Bucharest, Romania, representing Kimiko Goon, the Romanian arm crusher, Corden Ganea. And his tag partner of Recoil, Corden Ganea. Not sure what it is, but Coterie has come in, and a lot of teams have decided to do separate entrances. Let's go. Ganea. Also looking to get his, what he feels is a rightfully earned rematch for the titles. From Gotham, New York, the Batman, Cole Rainer. But they have a hell of a mountain to climb to get there. Cole Rainer and Donovan Payne, of course, the Shake Shack. Who in the past couple months have been able to put the Violence family in their place. I wanted to give them an opportunity here tonight to get a chance at those, at those tag titles, because if I'm being honest, sounds like a hell of a thing to put on a win-loss record. The Coterie being able to defeat the Shake Shack and another team at Supernova. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And of course, that other team has been since announced. The contender tournament on retaliation will be how they determine who their representatives are going to be but now get ready to go grab some popcorn and be back in time to see him about halfway through his entrance from Vancouver British Columbia in Canada Donovan Payne and the Texas crowd here tonight, showing their appreciation for Donovan Payne. 
who of course came over during that shakeup we had. Came to the aid of Cole Rayner. And then fast forward a few months, or a couple months, and now Shake Shack have an opportunity to become number one contenders on resurgence for the tag titles. Long entrance slowly becoming a favorite. Not really slowly becoming, it has become a favorite for the members of the RWR community. Just not looking forward to the day where we get a triple threat match between Donovan Payne, Jack Johnson, and then for some reason Max uh, Max Silverstein decides to rebirth the Crimson King, and then the three of them have a triple threat match. Ninety percent of the show would be their entrance. What's up? Shake Shack and favorite here. Texas, of course. Cole Rainer himself. While he may reside in the Bat Cave, he is originally from Houston, Texas. If memory serves correctly. No, sorry. Dallas. Last minute stretches in. There you see Recoil and the Shake Shack. Both teams are ready. Bell Rings match is underway. Colonel will tie up to begin it. Damien Longoria takes Cole to a side headlock. Rainer trying to battle for position there. You see the hand going to the wrist, trying to slide the arm off. Not able to do so. Longoria goes behind, well, to the side. Takes down Rainer. And Cole, not going to let him get in another collar and elbow, but big clothesline by Longoria takes him down. Takes to the head by Rainer. Tried for a cutter, not able to get it. Northern Lights Suplex connects though. On an uppercut. I'm on the midsection. Oh my god! Rolling power bomb to the outside. Underhook suplex there by Ganea. As Longoria gonna continue going after the bat here. Rainer going after the leg of Longoria, had him hooked there for something. Chest chop trading back and forth, punch to the midsection there. Kick gets blocked, Longoria sent over to the other side. Every quarter of the way through the count there at five. Bell clap, he punched to the midsection. And a DDT. I'm gonna send Longoria against the side there. 
one of those punches to the face. Referee's count is at 10. Neckbreaker. Oh, God, Longoria's head bouncing off that turnbuckle post. Rainer sent back into the ring. Longoria follows him behind. Fireman's carry by Rainer. Swing blade. Cover. One. Two. No, two only. Oh, and an elbow right to the top of the head. Longoria gonna tag in Ganea. Drop kick. Rainer gets back out. Forearm. Rainer's back up and another forearm. This time Rainer staying down. Donna wanted to be tagged in. Not allowed to though. Ganea breaks it up. Oh, reverse DDT driver. Uppercut. Batman, look at the end of it! Bang! Into the cover! Two, no, two only! And the Batman gonna tag in his Shake Shack partner, Donovan Payne. And we're gonna dish out his own justice here. I wonder if they have Shake Shack. I was gonna make a shitty joke, but decided against it. Never mind. Double wrist lock. Kamara has it locked in. Donovan Payne though with a punch to the back and one to the face. Damage being done to the wrist. Big clothesline. Shoulder tackle. Damage being done to the arm of Donovan Payne, but not enough to get a submission. Shoulder tackle again, this time takes down Payne. And a kick to the back of the shoulder there. Big uppercut. Forearm to the side of the face. And just a bunch of punches and bunches there. Spinning knee. Donovan gonna send Ganea into the corner. Oh, Rainer! Tagged in! Are they gonna put him away? Assisted Batline! Into the cover! One! Two! No! Broken up by Ganea! Or broken up by Longoria, who also took out the rap. And Longoria going after Donovan Payne. Running good on Longoria. Paul Rainer sent Ganea into the corner hard. Reverse DDT. Paul has him up on his feet. Where is he going to bring him? Thinking about putting him in the corner of the Shake Shack. No. Part of Ganea was able to see where he was going. Able to get out of it. Cutter gets reversed. Jumping forearm takes him down. Ganea gonna taunt. Big uppercut. Close line. Donovan Payne wanting to be tagged in, but Ganea has Cole Rainer cut off. He puts the arm down. What is he gonna do? Oh god! Stomping on the hyperextended elbow there. Ganea reverse DDT driver! Into the cover. Broken up at one by Donovan Payne. Not wanting to allow any more damage to be done to his friend. Bo Rainer's back to his feet, Longoria going after the arm, rolls him through, Kamara has him hooked on the side, but no, Paul Rainer right away gets out of it. The crowd on their feet, 
And they are cutting off the offense of Cole Rayner. Going to stop the tag from happening with Donovan Payne. Cole takes Longoria onto his back. Has him hooked. Now twirls him around into a Rana. And you can see the bat is feeling fired up. Sent into the corner. Oh, elbow to the face takes down Cole Rayner, who is right back to his feet. Drop kick takes out the leg of Gennaro. Sent into the neutral corner. Now reverses. Cole reverses. Sent into the corner of the Shake Shack. Maybe looking to change up their position. Wait, no, what's this? In the mouth of the rope, elbow to elbows. And stomping Ganea on the side of his face before going on the back. Rings of Saturn! Rolls onto his back looking to submit. Gordon Ganea, and you can see Donovan wrenching on it with everything he has. But being a member of Kimiko Gun and having that submission experience, Gordon Ganea able to get out of it. Catches Dono, reverse DDT driver. Into the cover. One. No, only one. The heart and determination of Donovan Payne paying off. Gordon is lining him up, could be thinking. As the arm hooked, double wrist lock rolls over. Kamara! And is wrenching on it with everything he has. No! Donovan Payne! The fighting spirit! Able to get out of it, sent over the top rope. Gordon gonna tag in Longoria, clearly not able to put the match away. Damien can do what he has to do. Oh god, speaking of which, backdrop driver onto the apron! Color and elbow tie up on the outside, Donovan Payne able to push him off, tried for a chop, Longoria not gonna allow it, punch to the face. Sent hard into the corner. And these punches in the corner by Longoria, telling Donovan Payne to stay down. You know, just some mounted punches here. Oh, God! Nine to three elbows. By that I mean how his elbow was moving across his forehead. Trying to cut open the head of Donovan Payne, kick to the midsection. The frustration clearly building within Damian Longoria. In midsection, Donovan Payne has him hooked to reverse DDT. No, Rackbiker! The first count is at 11. Oh, face first off the ring post. Longoria busted open. Went back into the ring. Donovan Payne looking to end this. Get a shot for Shake Shack at Supernova. Go to me! Cover! One, two, broken up by Kenny! Donovan Payne going a little berserk there. Big clothesline. Big clothesline. Splash in the corner. Payne firing himself up, ducks the clothesline of Longoria, big jumping clothesline, and he is back to his feet. Donovan Payne trying to think of what to do next. Surprised he went to the corner. He had been thinking about using some shady tactics, but decided against it. Longoria. Oh, God! Had the arm track behind the back as he went for. Different looking Northern Lights Dragon Sleeper, Donovan's foot, I believe, was just under the rope. 
Now Hyper extending the arm, the blood coming down over the face of Longoria, stomping on the arm. Could this be Recoil's time to shine? To get a shot at those tag titles again. Tags in Corden. It's both kind of fucked. Kicks to the midsection. Kicks to the back. Cole wanting to be tagged in. Donovan Payne being ambushed by Corden Ganea isn't able to make it over. Kicks out the leg of Corden or at least tries to. Picks him up! Tombstone, no! Gordon hits one of his own! Using the leg as a tourniquet on the head as he hits him with an elbow. Stomping the arm. Having the arm hooked as he goes for a modified camel, no. Gordon back to his feet. Pull it over DDT. Cole Rainer wants to be tagged in. Donovan Payne not able to reach up to him in time. Go to the side of the head. to the head too. And Donovan Payne has has Corden up. Donovan Gonna pull him further away. Oh, tries to get him away from the ropes into the cover. So no broken up by Longoria. Oh Donald oh, had the head hooked. Cole gave him a punch, big clothesline. Looking to finish Corden again. Picks him up. Hangs him up on the top rope. The blood you can see pulling down the face of Corden Ganea. Strips up Dono. Corden could be looking to end this, get a shot at those tag titles for recoil. And Donovan Payne is looking a little loopy here. Gets the arm hooked. Double wrist lock rolls over. Not in position in the Kamara. And Donovan Payne right away gets out. Knows what that Kamara can do. Has been a victim of it in the past. Sent into the corner. Cole Rayner gets tagged in. Running boot to the head. Cole Rayner looking to gain a shot at the titles for the Shake Shack. Battering. Into the cover. Longoria already in the ring. Breaks it up. Into the midsection. Cole Rainer knows that if Longoria hadn't broken that up, we would be looking at number one contenders. The pool of blood starting to go onto the chest of Ganea. Drop kick. Oh, jawbreaker. Double stomp. Oh, and the leg across the throat of Ganea. Donovan Payne looking to end this. Running knee to the side of the head. Oh, God, the Overcastle. Sit down, Overcastle. As the legs hooked. Oh, God. Curb stomp. The aggression from Donovan Payne. I haven't seen him get this aggressive in a long time. Go to knee. Into the cover. One. Two. Broken up by Longoria again. Oh! Miscommunication! Cole Rayner tried to clothesline Longoria. Instead took down Donovan Payne.
elbow to the side of the face, punch to the ribs. Sent into the corner. Donovan Payne busted open too. Off the ropes. Oh, boot to the face. Paul Rainer wants to be tagged in. Donovan Payne not able to get to him though. Oh God, look at how he has the body stretched. Dono able to get out of it though. Into the corner. Quick tag here. Kick. Oh God. Oh, double stomp to the back. Recoil. Has him pinned. Donovan Payne able to get out of it. Kicks in the midsection. Backbreaker. Neckbreaker. And Donovan Payne gonna tag in Cole Rayner. Really no hard feelings about that miscommunication with the clothesline neckbreaker. Cole sent over the top rope. Corning gonna tag in Longoria. Has both arms hooked into the belly and belly. Or belly to belly, I should say. Longoria just feeling that blood pool on the forehead. Clearly, the wear and tear of the match starting to get to him. Sends Cole over the top rope. Oh, God. Donovan Payne trying to save Cole from the same fate he suffered. Backdrop driver. Cole sent back into the ring. Longoria follows in after. Hangs Longoria on the second rope. Oh, knee to the back. Sent into the corner. Oh, gonna reverse it. Into the corner of recoil. Cole Rayner, though, is able to recover in time. Kick to the midsection. Stomping on the back of the leg. Picks up Longoria. Sends him into the corner. Running drop kick. Goes off the ropes. And again! The damage clearly being done. Cole Rayner looking to finish it. Bat line. Cover. One. Now broken up by Ganea. He rolls Donovan through. Leg drop on the arm. And Cole Rayner. Bad thinking about what he has to do next. Kick to the midsection, got caught. Longoria hits one of his own. Kick to the midsection. Big cross body. Going after the arm. Picks him up. Jumping clothesline. Has him hooked, reverse DDT. Oh, kick right in the middle of the back. Reverse DDT. And now Cole Rayner looking to end this. Once and for all, Batarang. Into the cover. One, two, no! Cole Rainer. The heart and determination of the bat. Oh, 
Oh, flip. Almost a DDT there. Head going into the apron. Modified camel clutch. The foot almost touching the back of the head. Longoria able to get out of it. German. You see Cole Rayner right away continues his crawling pace there. Trying to keep fighting. The heart and determination of the bat not giving in. Drop kicks over and over. Rolls through with a neck breaker. Super kick. Straight jacket German into the cover. Two, no, Rainer able to get out of it. And Longoria wanting to end it, but Cole Rainer still fighting. Jumping dropkick gets caught, drop kick. Oh god, no double stop of his own. And again, this combination. Double stomp to the back. Gordon into the cover. Two. Broken up by Donovan Payne. Dropkick misses. Takes down Longoria. And Cole Rayner kicks in the midsection. Jumping crossbody. Sling blade. Pulls him to the middle of the ring, into the cover! One, two, that's it! The winner of the match and now resurgence is number one contenders for the Tag Team Championship, the Sheik Shack. And you want to talk about a goddamn war of attrition? The Shake Shack going to Supernova. But coming up next, we get to determine another number one contender as Marvelous Matt Matthews gets a shot against Doug Shepard. And the Coterie, I can promise you this, will leave Supernova with all the damn gold. And now we get proof of it. This following contest, scheduled for one fall, is to determine the number one contender for the RWR Revolution Championship. From London, England, this is the King of the Wing and your wife's favorite wrestler, Marvelous Matt Matthews. And Matt Matthews, who has had a hell of a season, and it is so sad to see that unfortunately this is gonna be how that season ends. Matt Matthews, he's been incredible, did extremely well in the Phoenix Cup. And even since I've been here, winning match after match, getting the fans behind his back, but tonight, that fire that has started inside the soul of Matt Matthews gets extinguished. Like pouring water on a match. And it is because of the coterie.
making his way to the ring from Toronto, Canada, residing in San Francisco, California, weighing in at 250 pounds, representing the coterie, Doug Shepard. And this is where things will get interesting. Have you seen Doug Shepard? Sorry. I need to play spoiler. He's gonna walk out of here, number one contender. He is going to win this match. And he is going to put that gold back where it belongs, and that is around his waist and in the offices of the Coterie. And if you don't like it, then I quite honestly don't give a damn. Marvelous Matt Matthews, your future number one contender, Doug Shepard. Both men are ready. Bell rings. Match is underway. Kick to the midsection by Matthews. Has Doug hooked into a suplex. No brain buster. And a kick between the shoulders. Followed up by a second one. It's nice of Doug to let Matthews get like his two, sec his two seconds in here. Sorry, hiccup. Dawnbreaker, big clothesline, and Matthews is down. Reverse DDT. And these mounted punches by Matthews. And by the way, when I say all this cover, not even one. When I say all this stuff about Matthews, I am not at all putting him down. He is a great in-ring competitor. The only problem is he is going up against one of the best to day. Period. End of story. And if you don't like that, then I'm sorry that you live in such a dark, clouded past. That you still believe names like Martin Starr, Max... Silverstein and Jake Rogers are relevant. Splash in the corner. Has him up on his shoulders. Big somehow and drop by Doug. Stopping the arm. Shoots the half into the cover. Matt Matthews' foot underneath the bottom rope. Matthews has him up, another brain buster. Gotta be careful how many times he goes to the well. Elbow to the face. Matthews hung him up on the top rope. Like, that's what I'm talking about. The kid has potential, he has ambition, he has determination, he has heart. <coughs> it's just a shame that he also has this here tonight. Only one. Wrenching on that midsection. Octopus stretch. Going after the midsection, the arm, even the hips there with how he has him contorted. But if he seriously thinks this is enough to put Doug away, good, he, at least he doesn't. He does let go of the hold. Jawbreaker. Yoshi Tonic back of the head on the bottom rope. Now gonna pull Matthews into the middle of the ring here. Shoots the half cover. Not even one. Okay, Matthews. You're showing some grit, some valor. I like it. Going after the shoulder. Knee to the midsection. Stomping the midsection. Matthews headed up. Leg drop. Rolls back into the ring. Cover. One, two, no, two only. Sent into the corner. Forearm to the face. Oh, 
the elbow and or sorry, the knee. Not the elbow, the knee. Under the side of the face. Up on his shoulders. Knee to the face. Matthews headed off the ropes. Oh, knee and chin across the forehead there. That was just busted open. Into the cover. Two. What? The winner of the match, and now number one contender for the World Revolution Championship, Marvelous Matt Matthews! What in the hell? Can we get medical staff out there to check on Doug? He's barely responding. Referee, why are you throwing up the X? Matt Matthews, number one contender, but... Dude, please get someone out there to check on Doug. What? No! Security! Threatening an official. What in the hell? Come on! Where in the hell is the god? What did? Did Silverstein, Martin Starr, and Roger somehow pay off security to not listen to any time I call for them? Medical staff, get out there and check on Doug. Get him out of the ring and bring him into the back, too, before you do that. Because we have our main event match coming up next. A certain egotistical British fuck decided to return last week. So now he gets to be put back in the hospital by the man who did it to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. From London, England, Martin Star. Glad to see while he was off, he could grow in his beard, but not the rest of his frickin' chest hair. And as I said last week, Phoenix Cup, Martin Star decided that it would be a good time for him to return. See it right here. Doug and Prodigy were looking to put him away, but Martin Starr decided to not lay on his back. And speaking of Prodigy, not willing to let what happened to Doug tonight happen to him, and is instead just gonna take Martin Starr the hell out. He's got the steel chair. In the ring. Looking to end him like he did before. What? What is he doing here? I'm sure many of you are wondering why I'm here. Now, you probably have a good idea, but some of the more astute you may be asking, how am I here? And I will explain, because no doubt someone backstage is probably yelling into a walkie-talkie for security. But what he should be doing is rifling through some of Josh's old paperwork, specifically from around Rise from the Ashes 3. You see, many of you have heard that I allowed another resurgent superstar to take place of one of my brand's picks in this year's tournament, under the condition that I'd be allowed to pick who that was. But what you didn't hear about was the other stipulation I included. And that is, for one month, I would be allowed to come over to Resurgence. Now, if you think back to the beginning of the season, Resurgence was pretty sad, I have to admit. DJ Kraft, Gil Thunderstrike, and of course, Martin Starr. 
all of them I would have loved the chance to get in the ring with again. But then you happened, Devin. And well, I guess we can all put the pieces together. I mean, maybe some people. Maybe they didn't get it when I took down Razor Sharp last year. Maybe I was just worried about my show. Or maybe they didn't get it back in season one when I was on the front lines leading the charge versus the red. Maybe I was just protecting my own neck. No. By now, you should all know that I'm going to protect anything. It's going to be the entirety of RWR. I'm not one to float from place to place like some. When I pick a home, I plant my feet and I stay there. Now, Devin Beverly wants to come and take over my home over my dead body. So here it is, Devin. I'm here for the month and I'm going to get right to the point. You see, you aren't like the other two I mentioned. You don't have a separate personality like the Crimson King did. You aren't suffering from extreme paranoia like Razor Sharp. No, you're cool, calm, and collected. A proper businessman. Which is exactly what I have for you. A business proposition. See, while you may not suffer from any kind of instability, you are a businessman. And all businessmen suffer from the same basic flaw. Greed. So allow me to play to your greed. You want more? I'll give you more. Not satisfied with just one show? How about both? Supernova. Yourself and whatever coterie crony you want versus Martin Starr and myself. Winner takes all. Shouldn't be too hard, right? After all, you guys took care of Martin once before, and I'm just an out-of-practice GM, right? Should be a cakewalk. Oh, but if you guys fail or turn down our offer, what would everyone say? Clock's ticking, Devin. You know where we'll be. Now, until then, I'll allow everyone to cheer you guys on. Loud and proud, everyone. How do we feel about Devin and the Coterie? Fuck the Coterie.